Welcome to Retro Arcade Reviews. My name is John and in this episode, we will be reviewing the arcade classic, Section Z. Section Z is a side scroll and shoot 'em up that was developed by Capcom in 1985. First and foremost, I've never played this game in the arcades. The first time I ever played Section Z was on the NES, which was an amazing game. Basically, you have to navigate Captain Commando the old Captain Commando, not the newer one you find in the Marvel vs. Capcom games, but the older, more awkward looking one, through a series of numbered sections. At the end of each section, you have to choose a path which leads you to a different section. Choosing a wrong path can loop you back to prior sections in the game, so it's kind of like a maze. To progress, you must search for a generator in a specific area, destroy it, and defeat the boss so you can further progress. The thing is that you need the map that came with the game, because navigating it solely on memory can be extremely difficult. I know this because me and my friend lost the map one day and because of that we could never beat the game. But all in all it's a really cool game. So years later I remember buying Capcom's arcade collection for the PS2 and to my surprise I saw Section Z on the list. I didn't even know it was an arcade game so naturally I got really excited because of all the fond memories I had of the NES version. And to my disappointment I got this. This is one of those instances when the NES port of the game is way better than its arcade counterpart. Strangely, the game reminded me a lot of Moon Patrol. In my opinion, it almost feels like a spiritual sequel. Although I can't find any sources to confirm this, let me tell you why I think this is so. First, the stages in both games are broken down alphabetically into 26 sections, leaving Section Z at the final stage. In Section Z, there are boss battles at Section E, J, O, T, and Z. Moon Patrol has a similar system, but instead of boss battles, there's a checkpoint. Secondly, both games have a similar dual firing mechanism where the fire button shoots directly forward and throws a grenade at the same time. In Moon Patrol, it fires forward and straight up at the same time. Thirdly, it's designed by the same person who, in fact, also created Kung Fu Master, directed the original Street Fighter, and also produced the Fatal Fury and King of Fighters series. So in a way, the game almost feels like the story is a continuation of Moon Patrol, where in Section Z, you get out of your moon buggy to explore a space station. I mean, it would have been awesome if that was the case. The story goes in this game is that the Balangul Empire is rampaging through space, invading one planet after another. You have to infiltrate their base and destroy the L brain lurking deep in the final Section Z. As mentioned earlier, you have a gun which also drops a bomb when you fire and a turn button so you can fire behind you. Which, if you really want to make life easier on yourself, you better get used to the turn button because certain enemies tend to circle around you. You can obtain items that can increase your rate of fire or your speed. Fortunately, when you die, you continue in the section you died in, so the game is not as frustrating as with a lot of arcade games of this period. Now, I always thought that Section Z was somewhat inspired by the 1968 movie 2001 A Space Odyssey by Stanley Kubrick. You know, because of the whole lone astronaut and red space outfit sort of thing. But according to sources, the character design in the game may have been inspired by Barrett Duke, also known as Alien Sector, which came out five months earlier that same year. However, I'm not really too sure about this because it's just too narrow of a a window for me, so I have my doubts about that claim. I'd rather stick with my spiritual sequel Moon Patrol Theory. Section Z was re-released on Capcom Classics Collections Volume 1 for the PS2 and Xbox, Capcom Classics Collections Remixed for the PSP, and the Capcom Arcade Cabinet for the PS3. After playing through the game a number of times, I have to be totally honest with you and say that I'm not really a big fan of this game. Arcade version, that is. I mean, I struggled to stay engaged with the game and it really just didn't do it for me. Despite that, I always consider game creators to be artists, and one constant among artists is their sensibility. Playing an early work of Takashi Nishiyama, you get to experience one of the greatest game creator sensibility in its infancy and how his evolution created gaming legacies which continued decades after its inception. So in that respect, try the game out once or twice and let me know what you think.